There are so many skill sets and playstyles to explore in this game. You've got consistency players, tech players, speed players, aim players, Nintendo Wii players. Wait, Nintendo Wii players? These skill sets can also be related to certain mods a lot of the time, and so they're also tested exhaustively in tournament play. So it begs the common question when should you start using mods to get a grasp of these skill sets? That's what I'll be discussing in today's video, amongst other questions like how to learn them, what maps to play, and other tips along the way. So, welcome to a full Fundamentals to Mods guide. Timestamps are on screen right now and in the description down below. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The question of when to start using mods actually has a very simple answer. You use them whenever you want at any stage in the game. But I guess the real question being asked is when to start learning them. As in, actually putting time and effort into them, setting hundreds of scores and spending hundreds of hours on them, without risk of falling into the mods too early trap or other traps along the way. That's the question I really want to tackle in this video, so here we are. There are three main mods that come to mind first and foremost. These are Hidden, Hard Rock and Double Time. They affect the general difficulty of the map, and so apply increased score multipliers and are able to grant more PP. Those three mods are also commonly tested in standard tournament settings within their own dedicated pools. So yeah, they are quite important. I will focus on these three mods in this video for those reasons, so I won't talk about the other stuff today. Starting off with Hidden, the simplest one of them all. Hidden removes the approach circles and makes them fade out for a 1.06 times score advantage. It doesn't affect any of the difficulty values of the map. I like to think of it as a somewhat preferential mod since there are players who like to play the game mainly in Hidden. They are called Hidden One Tricks. There are top players like Cookie Z and Okinamo who prefer to play this way, though they can definitely play without it in a tournament setting. Being a Hidden One Trick is completely fine though, even if you're not a top player. This is the only mod that doesn't have diminishing returns despite being one tricked. But why is that the case? As mentioned before, they don't change the difficulty values of the map, and they don't change the map itself. You are still exposed to a huge variety of skills when you switch between maps, whether that's high BPM, low BPM, high AR, low AR, etc, and of course, all the types of patterns available in the game. So stuff like bursts, streams, tech, jumps, finger control patterns, and so on. The only downside is when you ever want to play in tournaments. If you haven't learned other skill sets, or in some cases, haven't even touched no mod at all, then you're absolutely fucked. Otherwise, it's free PP and enjoy sniping your nomad friends with lower ack. When should you start learning hidden though? My advice is as follows. If you want to start learning hidden as soon as possible, I'd suggest to start learning it once you're comfortable with the mid to high 4 star range at minimum. Though, if you're not rushing to learn hidden, then stick with the sweet spot, which I'll mention and explain later on. Mid to high 4 stars is the minimum range to play around in with hidden, because generally, at anything lower, the AR is quite low, and it's hard for non-experienced players to understand when to hit the object as they fade away really slowly. Their rhythm sense is not strong enough, their reading is not strong enough, and generally, their understanding of the fundamental skills is just not strong enough. Low AR hidden tends to be a skill picked up by very experienced players. They could be top players, tournament players, specialised reading players, etc. However, everything changes once you reach comfortability at mid to high 4 stars. Comfortable is a pretty vague term I know, but something along the lines of, hey, I could FC this with good accuracy quite easily if I wanted to, is probably a good example of it. At this point, you probably know how to do basic bursts, jumps, read other basic patterns and understand basic rhythm. The AR is not really low here, it tends to be around AR9 at this star range, which is pretty standard for most levels of play. So combining your basic rhythm sense and other basic osu skills with a more intuitive, easy to read AR means that this feels like the minimum sweet spot to start learning hidden. When it comes to the question, how do you learn hidden, it's actually very simple. You just turn on the mod and play more. I don't need to provide a map pack, so play a variety of maps to understand how different stacks of circles can be read with hidden, how the fading of circles changes with approach rate, and how to read a variety of patterns with hidden in general. Now, I know some people will ask questions like, when do I hit the circle though? How do I know how many circles there are? And so on. But believe me, it's something you pick up with experience. It's not something that someone should or even could explain. Eventually, when you've progressed far enough and played enough, you might want to learn how to play specifically low approach rates, and that is a core reading skill that is tested in tournament play. Man, AR8 hidden or even AR7 is like, 
infamously hated in this scene because of the object density, intense reading and aim control that the general player race isn't particularly good at. One thing to note is that shit missing is normal at first as well, since you won't be accustomed to reading circles in this way. What I suggest is that you try your best to focus on reading notes individually, and as you play more, you will have a feel for when you have to tap to the rhythm, and reading will become instinctive as you rack up more hours in the game. If you're struggling at first, and you are really clueless, then I'd advise that you play hidden on maps that you already have good scores on. Since you're already comfortable with the patterns and you're bound to have built some muscle memory for them, as in you know the rhythm, you know the pattern, etc., then it will give you a helping hand to understand the intuition behind hitting circles in hidden. Then you can work up from there. Work towards higher star rating, harder patterns, sight reading, low AR, high AR, etc., whatever interests you. That concludes my advice for hidden, so let's move on to hard rock. Hard rock adds quite a few levels of complexity to the map. It flips the map on its x-axis while raising the CS by 30% and raising the rest of the difficulty values by 40. The CS value is probably a bit confusing since CS stands for a circle size and Hard Rock increases this difficulty value but in-game it decreases the actual size of the circles so it makes them harder to hit. Changing the map and changing its difficulty values mean that the star rating also changes. The reward for playing with this mod is a 1.06x score multiplier and potential for more PP. The difficulty values can only increase up to 10 with Hard Rock only though, so AR9 with Hard Rock is not AR12.6. The only way that it can go above 10 is with DT. Now, here's an important point to note. This should not be considered a preferential mod, unlike Hidden. Hard Rock one tricks exist of course, but if they can't play anything else, this is severely damaging and provides diminishing returns. I've seen many beginners and even experienced players fall into this trap. It changes the map itself, it changes the star rating and it changes the difficulty values. So when the values cap out at 10, all the map needs to be is AR 7.2 and then Hard Rock bumps it all the way up to AR 10 just immediately. This in turn reduces your variety of play. A large majority of Osu beatmaps played are above AR 7.2, so if you are a hard rock one trick, you'll only know how to play AR 10. You'd be no different to the jump one tricks in 2020. You'd be relying on your muscle memory and reaction times rather than actual reading. Again, I've seen many players being bottlenecked on their improvement journey because they rely on AR 10 to even read at all. Anything lower and their brain just dies, and I wish I was joking. But also, even worse, if they're relatively inexperienced, say mid six digit with under 100 hours, then they wouldn't have good enough rhythm sense to get good accuracy on OD10 anyway. So the combination of that and lack of reading means boom, shit ass ack on every play and they end up being no different to the players mentioned in my 2020 video. If you're one of those one tricks, I would advise going back to basics and relearning the fundamentals of reading, just like the 2020 jump one tricks had to. You won't regret it and you'll find yourself improving immensely as a result. So if playing Hard Rock too early is not ideal, then when should you start learning Hard Rock? Now, this is where I introduce the sweet spot for starting to learn literally any skill set. And the sweet spot is as follows. Once you're comfortable with a variety of maps at the mid five star range, and maybe your skill level could be way beyond that as well, then you can do whatever the hell you want. And no, I'm not saying, oh, once you've reached this point, you have to play mods. No, I'm saying that once you reach this point, learning mods will be so much easier. It's kind of like playing through a long ass tutorial of a game, and once you've done that, you've unlocked the open world and you can do whatever you want from there, having learned the fundamentals of the game. And that applies in Osu, because once you're comfortable with the mid 5 star range, then you'll have mastered fairly advanced skills, stuff like fundamentals of streams instead of basic bursts, larger jumps instead of small jumps, varied finger control, gimmick patterns, tech patterns, etc. Not only have you mastered fairly advanced skills, if you're comfortable here, then you're also starting to climb up to and set decent scores on 6 stars and above. Meaning that generally, you've reached a good level of play to start branching out from. You've equipped yourself with everything you need to not bottleneck yourself and then the improvement journey is relatively straightforward. Still a hard journey, don't get me wrong, but at least you don't have to go backwards like the jump one tricks or the hard rock one tricks. So how do you learn hard rock then? Here I'd like to provide a starting strategy, and it gives another reason why the sweet spot is great. My advice is to at first, play it on maps that are lower than your comfortable no mod star range, 
by approximately one or even more if necessary. Since the sweet spot asked for a minimum of being good at a variety of mid 5 stars, if you are good at exactly that, then following my advice means that you would find yourself at the mid 4 stars, where it just happens to be where you revisit the basic burst, basic jumps, basic patterns again, but with high OD, high AR and high CS. This is the strategy, and it's a good one because it's not like hidden where you can play it on any map and learn it with good foundations. As you'll find out if you're new to Hard Rock, the problem usually isn't the aim requirements, it's mostly the accuracy requirements. Lowering the star range results in easier patterns and therefore makes it easier to get used to the high OD. Once you've mastered basic Hard Rock consistency, maybe at the low to mid 6 star level, branch out into streams, precision, tech, finger control, etc. There are lots of skills related to Hard Rock. I've even seen players at around rank 2000 to 3000 struggle to play Hard Rock just from problems with accuracy alone. Their aim is good, but they don't understand how to act on complex patterns. I've told them to lower their star rating, learn how to hit the fundamental patterns with Hard Rock, and then work up to the complex patterns from there. And it's worked out for them, apparently. But if you're finding it too hard to play with Hard Rock at first, then start with maps that you're already good at. Let muscle memory help you out and grease up the journey a little bit. You will see lower act than usual at first, that is normal, but I assure you, you'll improve over time just like any skill in the game. That's it for my advice on Hard Rock, so let's move on to the final mod, which is Double Time. Double Time also adds a layer of complexity to the map. The same applies with Nightcore. A score multiplier of 1.12 times is the reward for playing with this mod, which is equivalent to Hidden and Hard Rock put together. Applying DT increases BPM by 1.5 times, not 2 times and thus reduces the length by 1.5 times as well. Unlike Hard Rock, it does not flip the map and it does not change all difficulty values. It only changes the AR, HP and OD. Though, exactly how it changes is not straightforward and not important anyway. The BPM and OD increases combined results in copious amounts of VP reward. Again, this should not be considered a preferential mod for the exact same reasons as described with Hard Rock. It changes the star rating and it changes its difficulty values. If you are a literal DT1 trick, it means that all you're good at is reading high AR and playing fast maps, which is not good for your reading and not good for your versatility, because you're not exposing yourself to a variety of maps. So if you are a DT1 trick to the point where you can't even read anything below AR10 or play anything under 240 BPM for example, I highly advise you revisit the fundamentals and you won't regret it either. When should you learn DT? The sweet spot will be used here again, so if you're comfortable with a variety of mid 5 stars, then that should be good enough to start learning DT. How you learn it though is a more complicated task and requires a strategy. What you'll realise is that you can't just put double time on any map and just expect to be able to play it, unless you're Emmerich and, and at this point I, 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 I can't even... I, I, I can't... I, I... Anyway, the point is that you can't exactly put it on a 200 BPM burst map and expect to hit it at 300 BPM. These are entirely different levels of play and requires unholy amounts of speed, something that is only improved with a lot of experience and a lot of playtime. The strategy therefore is to start from the easiest place and work up from there, the easiest place being DT farm maps. See how that's a common theme, you can apply that to any skill. Find the easiest place to work up from that suits you, that trains the fundamental concepts and work up from there. That's how you can learn literally anything. I recommend DT farm maps instead of like DT speed or DT figure control or sped up maps because it is safe advice to literally anyone asking the question, no matter if you're naturally speedy or not or whatever experience you have. And no, I'm not talking about CBCC, Mini Mini Stop, Harry Magic Clover and all the jump spam garbage that exists, but I do have a selection in this map pack which you can find in the description down below. They start at high 3 stars no mod, which becomes low 5 stars after DT. Which is perfect, because as we mentioned in the sweet spot, you're assumed to have mastered a variety of maps at that star range already. Sure, they're DT farm, but these maps are actually useful because they introduce you to basic bursts and basic jumps at a BPM over 200 with higher OD, higher AR, amongst everything else. That shit like Harry Machi Clover does not. Once you're good at those, your fingers get faster, you can read higher AR and then you work up from there. Bursts continue to get faster and longer, jumps get faster, wider, AR gets higher, finger control and stamina demand is higher, etc. You'll find that again, accuracy is a problem, because you've never had to tap so fast before, never had to read so fast before, never needed to have so much stamina and finger control before. But learning a skill for the first time is always hard, 
you just get better over time. Having mastered everything in the spreadsheet means that you've grasped the fundamental DT skills. You've got good speed, good DT aim, good DT stamina, and that is transferable to the world of speed, which is a layer above DT alone. Stuff like DT finger control, DT streams, DT alt, all of these will be so much easier to learn and much more. Such skills are actually tested in the tournament scene. Alright, that's all I have to say about those three mods, so... No wait, actually, there is one more question that lots of people ask that I just remembered, which is how do you learn high AR when it comes to DT? My answer is, no matter if you choose to increase the AR slowly, or just jump straight into it, you will have to end up using brute force either way. It's a completely new experience, and your eyes haven't adjusted, so all you have to do is just play it and get used to it. And, unironically, you could use Raffis base skins to see if that helps out in any way as well. Okay, now it's actually time to summarise it all up in the conclusion. Today we learned that if you want to learn the main mods efficiently and effectively, it's probably best to follow a strategy. It revolves around mastery of a certain skill range with no mod, and then choosing a lower star rating to apply the mod, and then to start from the bottom and grind to the top. Of course, many people can just turn it on and learn for themselves at any time at any place. You don't have to follow my words as if these are the words of Jesus Christ himself or something, but the guidelines I've given here work for me and I know has a good chance of working for the majority of people watching. It's a safe strategy, based off my experience as well as my observations of players in my Discord who have started to learn mods. I found out that those who were great at a variety of mid 5 stars were able to learn mods very well with little to no problems at all. And so I've called this the sweet spot, and once you've reached it, then you can learn any skill set that you want, because you will have equipped yourself with mastery of fundamental and fairly advanced skills in the game. That is the answer to the question of when to start learning mods, and I hope you found it very useful. If you did, drop a like, or drop a dislike if you didn't, that's fine too. Subscribe for more informational videos, and hopefully, I'll see you all in the next video. But hopefully, not in fucking five months time. But yeah. I'll see you all in a bit. Peace.